Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter. Over there in the shadows is Tim. <laughs> because exposure works funny when it's really bright outside. That's what it gets for living in LA. What can I do? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there was a weird there was a weird glitch on Skype actually when we first mm-hmm. booted up and Tim mm-hmm. couldn't like hear me, so he wasn't responding to anything I was saying, and he was just kind of staring and because of like how like sort of underexposed he is and it he looks like, just like almost like a silhouette. It was kind of mm-hmm. creepy for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. I thought he was doing a bit for a while. I, I thought he was trying to scare me intentionally. Uh, mm-hmm. But here he is. At some point, there's just going to be... Like, you're just going to be asleep, and the computer's going to turn on. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just going to be my face, and then you're going to message me and be like, hey, why'd you Skype me last night? And I'll be like, well, I didn't Skype you. What are you talking about? Uh, there'll just be random files appearing on my desktop, labeled yeah. Tim, and I'll click on it, and it'll just be you in various situations yeah. and poses. <laughs> Unfriended three incoming call. <laughs> Unfriended three, Tim. <laughs> Tim request. <laughs> Unfriend Tim. That's just good advice. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> I mean, try it if you can. It's hard. <laughs> uh, so. We talk about horror movies on this show, mm-hmm. and this episode we are going to be talking about The Strangers. This is kind of a preempt uh, ep- episode mm. because we're going to be talking about The Strangers 2. Um, mm. Not quite next, because we've got a bonus episode, because we missed last week. Uh, you may have noticed that there was no episode last week. We are deeply apologetic mm-hmm. for that. Uh, that was not planned. That was kind of last minute. Tim had to skip out of town when we would be mm-hmm. recording. Uh, so you're getting a bonus one to make up for it. Uh, I won't reveal what that is at mm-hmm. this moment, but you'll get that before Strangers 2 next week. You make it sound like I was having like trouble with the law or something. Like that. And, uh, yeah, the, well, no, the heat just... was coming down. I had to wait till things cooled off. And... I, I just mean you didn't know about it in advance. You, t- you, you yeah. told me like a day or two before, oh, hey, I have to be out of town for like a few days, so mm-hmm. we can't do it this week. Uh, you know, that's all I meant. Well, good to know that that excuse worked. So. <laughs> <laughs> See. It worked I was just once. At home eating Doritos. And... <laughs> Time's slacking. <laughs> playing video games that's what that's what it was you wanted to play god of war or something i don't know mm, i did get it but i haven't started it yet oh did you get it okay i um, i'm stuck playing okami i love the game but it's so long do you know tim, that... like i might get a lot of games that i don't get to for a while but i always get them when they're really cheap i feel like you always tell me you've bought a new 60 dollar game <laughs> and it'll sit there <laughs> and like, you could have waited and got it for like half price before you started playing <laughs> Well, um, and I'll tell you about it off air, but uh, oh. yeah, I did manage to get a pretty cheap copy, but uh, I don't know if I should <laughs> say why on the air, but I'll, oh. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> oh. Oh. T- Tim's around chasing Best Buy yeah. trucks, waiting for copies That's, of God uh, of War to fall off the back. That may have been why I had to skip town. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the heat was on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So we're going to talk about the uh, strangers. Actually, real, oh, real, sorry, real sorry. Uh, sorry. I'll let the tangent uh, continue. Sorry, I don't, that's is... so rude of me. To get the show back on track. On your time. It just it just reminded me uh, a, a really good recommendation. I don't know if you ever seen the wrong guy. It was like a, a small movie, but uh, it was like a early two thousands comedy starring Dave Foley. But it's real funny. It's kind of like it's kind of like the Fugitive. Like um, Dave Foley, uh, like he he's working at this office and he goes into his boss's uh, office and he's like very brutally murdered. Uh, and he so he gets really nervous and thinks he's like a suspect so he starts running away but like he's like, the cops actually don't care about him but he just like thinks that right. he's a fugitive so it's a pretty funny comedy I recommend it that does sound amusing I have to admit mm. that does, that does sound amusing. anyway uh, we talk about, we talk about horror movies uh, this episode we're going to talk about The Strangers uh, which is a film came out in 2008 and honestly I feel wow. I feel ancient that this is 10 years old now <laughs> that, yeah it's pretty crazy because I think one of the difference is now that stuff's starting to be ten years old is that mm-hmm. ten years ago I was already like an adult, so now it's starting to feel really like what? No. Like Yeah. Like it was one thing when it was ten years ago, but I was like ten, ten years ago. Right. That's yeah. not true anymore. <laughs> so uh <laughs> that that's hurts. It was also interesting it took ten years to do a sequel. But uh so this is the the Liv Tyler Scott Speedman film. Uh Brian Bertino wrote it. Well start spoiler free. Uh, he also directed it as well, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why I just said wrote it. He wrote and directed it. Uh, so we'll start spoiler-free, as we always do. We'll give you a warning before we dive into spoilers somewhere in the middle. And we'll get into it. So The Strangers is quite simply a home invasion movie. It is uh, a, a couple who go back to his like sort of parent, his parents' like 
uh, you know, summer house, you know, out in, out in the Cabin middle of nowhere. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, creepy people in masks start sneaking mm. around and harassing them and uh, try and kill them. That's basically the movie. That is the, that's the entire thing. Tim, <laughs> yeah. do you enjoy The Strangers? Uh, this, this might come as a, a shock to some people because I do think it is kind of a, you know, fairly well liked movie but i i am not a fan it's um oh, I, okay i don't i don't necessarily think that it's like poorly done like i, I get the appeal um but to me that's just like it, it doesn't feel natural to me everything feels really forced like it's this kind of it, it's creepy but it's this kind of way overdone manufactured creepiness to me where it's like Oh, everything is just so, you know, perfectly creepy. Like, you know, like you just so happen to be playing like, you know, the creepiest song and then the people in the masks. And it, it sounds like a weird complaint to be like, oh, <laughs> this horror movie is too creepy. But it, everything just feels like, oh, it, it's just so perfect that they just happen to be in that one spot. And then, you know, they just happen to have that like one creepy sounding record and uh, you know, and uh, it, it just feels like overdone to me. But it, it's not horrible. But I just don't really like it that much. I'm st I'm still waiting for that moment that Tim often has here, where he'll say, "I know, I'm just kidding," and then <laughs> they'll give his real opinion. Uh, I I am surprised by this, Tim. Uh, indeed, I did not know you felt this way about the strangers. Uh, I quite like it. I quite like the movie. I liked it when I saw it. Uh, it's funny. I see I've seen this a couple of times before. But it had been quite a number of years, and again, even that makes me feel old. That a movie that's ten years old, like I, I saw it a couple of times soon after it came out. You know, I saw it when it came out on Blu-ray, showed it to a few friends maybe a year later, and th then it's been like you know seven, eight years. So <laughs> here we are, and I still like it a lot. I still think it holds up. It's you know it's a very quick, short film. It's like eighty-five minutes, and that's <laughs> kind of perfect for this. I, I will criticise that the the Blu-ray has like the unrated extended cut too too hot for cinemas and i actually looked up what the differences were because i didn't know which one to pick i was like oh i can't remember is, is this one where the one version is you know better than the other and i looked it up to see what the differences were and it's like 30 seconds of a difference and they seem <laughs> so inconsequential like they make no difference <laughs> uh so hey ho so it doesn't really matter pick whatever you feel like if you if you wanted to be 30 seconds shorter <laughs> go with the actual yeah. cut doesn't really matter uh but no i dig it a lot and i i, I think it it plays to a lot of my sensibilities where I do love the mm. the the creepy mask killers mm -hmm. kind of coming at you. Um, I, I think the moment that sells me in this film, because I'm kind of into it, I, th I think it starts off fairly well. It gives me a couple of characters where clearly something's just happened where they're in this mm -hmm. place. It doesn't just treat them as this happy couple who are like, here's mm -hmm. them moving into the new house before spooky things start happening. Uh, mm -hmm. that's not that that's a foreshadowing thing for my opinion of the next movie we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I feel like there's like a history there. There's enough there that mm -hmm. I feel like they're actual characters. Uh, but the moment where the movie really sold me the first time I was watching it and kind of why I like it pretty much overall because it's full of these kind of moments is just, and this is in the trailer, this is not a spoiler, uh, but just the idea that one of these char characters, one of these villains, just mm -hmm. steps out of the shadows in the background, just stands there watching whilst the mm -hmm. scene plays out in one shot. And mm -hmm. the, our main character, Liv Tyler, never notices that he's standing there. Like, mm -hmm. that's the scene where I'm kind of like, okay, I'm into this. I'm into this, mm -hmm. just he's there in the background. It's very, it's the kind of stuff that I love in Halloween. It's the kind of stuff that I love in my, mm -hmm. my creepy killer movies. Um, no, it's as good as Halloween, of course, because Halloween's <laughs> Halloween. But uh, it kind of, it fills into that, that, that slot for me where I, I, I really mm -hmm. like the creepy killer stuff. I also, I really appreciate that if just to sort of dive into one of the subjects we often talk about with these movies, especially mm -hmm. modern horror movies, because we, we tend to have a complaint here, is that I think the music is wonderfully subdued. They don't mm -hmm. overdo it. There's no big sort of ta da when there's a jump sure. or yeah. anything like that. Mm -hmm. There'll be some minor suspenseful like bass strings, like maybe, you know, mm -hmm. when someone's like walking towards something. But it's very held back. There's not a lot of like you know, kapow in the soundtrack to make up for lack of scares. The scares are all oh, yeah. on the screen. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I don't, to be fair, like, I don't uh, necessarily think it's a 
poorly done movie. I just think this is one of those cases where this doesn't work for me, but I wouldn't be gudge, uh, you know, someone that does like it or yeah, I wouldn't like for the reasons why you're saying you're like, you like, I, mm. yeah, I wouldn't fight you and say like, Oh, you're wrong or, or anything. It's just, I don't know, for some reason when I watch it, just, and it doesn't really click for me. Um, like I, I do like the stuff that you're saying, like, um, you know, like that one scene where she's, um, I, I think it's like that she's like on the phone or, or whatever, and then the guy's just in the background. Yeah, she's her. on the phone, and then she goes over yeah. to the sink, and the entire time he's just kind of in the background, standing yeah. still. Like that, that scene is great, definitely. Um, but then, yeah, there's like a lot of other scenes where. Um, you know, like they'll look out a window and they'll see someone, uh, or the person will be watching them from a window. And then when they turn around and look, the person's gone. And, um, you know, which is fine. Like in a, I don't know if you're watching like some supernatural, like a you know, thriller or something, but like, I always, for some reason I, I get this thing stuck in my head where like, I just imagine like the person, the you know killer in the mask is outside, like looking for him and they're like, I'm just going to stand here. And then as soon as they look for me, I'm going to run real fast over here. Like, I don't I don't know. It just it kind of makes how, me laugh you, just thinking about that. How do you watch anything with Batman on it? Because <laughs> that, that that is referred to as Batman in out of a scene. How do, how do you even take that seriously? Well, I mean, you know, uh, Batman versus Superman is one of the best <laughs> movies, uh, <laughs> you know, with the character. But <laughs> I mean, Matt would be annoyed, but I, I guess you got to go with the because Batman <laughs> logic with that. <laughs> He's a ninja. It's okay. These are serial killers, not ninjas. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's that's the argument. Um, yeah, that doesn't bother me. Like, I, I feel like I mean, that's just, like like you say, you can't dispute that. I, like the reasons why I think it's good. Like, mm-hmm. there's, there's not much I can do to dispute. Oh, it doesn't click for me. Like there's there's, there's almost nothing I can say. Yeah. That. <laughs> like it just doesn't, right, if it doesn't right. click. It doesn't click. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I'm okay. I, I like that kind of creepy stuff with the standing and mm-hmm. staring. Uh, I, I guess the way I justify it, if I'm trying to justify what the characters are doing, even though I don't necessarily feel like I need to, but if I am going to justify it, it'd be like, no, they're intentionally messing with their heads. Because a lot of the movie is sure, that. Yeah. They'll, they'll leave messages mm-hmm. on places. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting because the movie claims that it's based on a true story. It starts off with a very <laughs> kind of, in 2005, this couple went to this <laughs> house and blah, 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 blah. What really happened that night has never been known. And uh, that, kind of, I, <laughs> that, that makes me laugh because they say like yeah what happened has never been known which is like well you're making some pretty big leaps in logic if you don't know what happened but this is what you think like yeah and here's the know. thing it's complete <laughs> bullshit because I, I i thought i got this from a commentary track but there's no commentary on the disc i don't, I don't know if i rented a different disc that had the commentary before or if mm-hmm. it was just an extra somewhere but um the director actually admitted the writer director admitted how much of this was actually based on a true story uh it was not based on a crime mm-hmm. it was based on something that happened in his childhood <laughs> oh okay and here is to be fair this scene is in the movie mm-hmm. and it's a really creepy scene it works really well uh mm-hmm. but this is what the entire movie is based around basically one night he was you know at home with his, his parents and i don't know if he had brothers mm-hmm. or sisters but you know they sit around he was maybe like six or something like that and the the door went doorbell went mm-hmm. and there was a just a girl there who just stood mm-hmm. there and asked for someone who didn't live at this house and was just kind mm-hmm. of stoic about it like then like yeah. ask oh sorry i've got the wrong house that must be like you know a door down or something mm-hmm. didn't ask for directions to anywhere else just stood there and asked for so i don't know if it's the same name in, in the movie it's tamara mm-hmm. the girl asked for mm-hmm. but a very common name yes but just this this creepy you know this creepy moment of like someone mm-hmm. just being very kind of weird and asking for this person who didn't live there yeah and then leaving and that was it um, well, that is definitely creepy um and but yeah i don't know if that's enough to you know say this is a true story oh i i agree uh, it's bullshit call it saying it's based on a true story is complete bullshit i i assumed that it was kind of based off um what's that french movie they or oh, you mean or them it, them yeah uh I, I assumed it was kind of based off of that story because you know very similar like uh, you know just kind of secluded couple with these to, to know, a point people it, stalking them that movie has a big twist though where you find out like who the killers are True. and mm-hmm. it's like a, it, it definitely separates it from this yeah mm-hmm. um no I, I dig this a lot i i dig the sense of uh kind of hopelessness like as soon as stuff starts kind of like oh these people are screwed like 
Uh, other stuff that makes sense to me as well. Like obviously, some of the things we have to deal with, uh, like you know, cell phones. Like, why are they not calling for help? Yeah. Like they intentionally kind of deal with that, and they, they deal with it in a way that doesn't feel too bullshit because it's like, no, no, mm -hmm. the killers themselves are taking their phones, so they can't call for mm -hmm. help. You know, it's just. I mean, it's simple, but it's better than oh no, there's no signal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, so uh, it, it works in that sense. I'll tell you this though. Mm -hmm. It's, it's clear that I hadn't watched this in a long time because mm -hmm. the last time I watched this, I had no idea who uh, who Dennis Reynolds was from It's Always Sunny. Yeah, oh yeah. So when he surprised. I was he, like, oh, shit. Yeah, when he showed up, I was like, oh, shit, he's in this movie. Clearly, I had not been watching It's Always Sunny uh, when, yeah. I, when I watched this last. So uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of a funny little, funny little moment. Uh, yeah. But no, they, no, I, they clearly were like, "Oh man, we we need to have a little bit of a body count. Like, <laughs> we can't <laughs> just have just these two people." Yeah, yeah, and it has a nice little ending to like that to that scene. Uh, <laughs> I, I I do like, like I say, I, I think the creepiness works really well, and I, I like the mm -hmm. the kind of the ominous like, is there a reason for why they're doing this kind of question that you know Liv Tyler brings up quite early on, and whenever that is kind of like questioned and answered like i love the response to that it's kind of just like this mm. ever present just because <laughs> uh yeah i mean uh yeah i'm, I'm not a big fan of it um, all right well i will we'll talk about that more spoilers so i can spoilers, talk about yeah. the actual <laughs> yeah, actually what the what the thing is but um i'm into it uh yeah. but no but i guess yeah this one's just kind of tasteful with everything else i guess sure <clears throat> i mean uh, yeah again it's like uh you know, it, it's acted very well. It, it's, you know, shot well and everything. So on a technicality level, you know, there isn't really anything uh, I would ping it for. I think, like you said, it just kind of comes down to, you know, matter like taste or opinion or whatever. And it's it's certainly not like I don't enjoy watching it. Like it's, you know, it's not like something I put on and I get angry about it. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I guess in like a weird way I'm watching, I'm kind of almost wanting to like it more because i'm like oh like i i kind of wish i it, it worked more for me but yeah tim do you like the boy more than you like the strangers i like the boy more than i like a lot of things <laughs> that's upsets me dearly but they're at that <laughs> that's upsets me all right spoiler you, one warning. thing this movie but... doesn't have is a little puppet boy <laughs> good it's better for it <laughs> <laughs> so, full spoilers then for the strangers from here on mm -hmm. out. You have been warned. Uh, so, no, I, I love. See, see when they get captured mm -hmm. at the end, and mm -hmm. she just asks them like, "Why are you doing this to us?" And the girl just says, "Because you were home." Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like to me, that feels like, uh, like that'd be more interesting if you're listening to like a true crime documentary or something and or i don't know like almost like an urban legend about like oh like they had these people tortured and killed these people and you know the reason was like there was no reason but i don't know i, I guess as a movie i kind of want more like oh this is all just random like i don't know it, it, it doesn't really do much for me i don't know why I, I, I kind of dig it again to go back to like, like why i love halloween like i love that there's no reason that the shape that michael myers does what he does he just is he's just evil incarnate yeah. uh i kind of dig that and again this is obviously a lesser version of that but uh I, I, yeah I, I feel like at least with stuff like that though at least you could say oh he's evil incarnate with this it's like oh like these are just like jerks i guess <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like uh they're because because this has like a more realistic bent to it and it's kind of like oh, oh sure like, these yeah. are real people but i feel they're... like it's just kind of yeah. like i like the idea of evil's just evil because like there's no motivation, because that's the scary thing to me, like, people, whenever there's, like, a, a mass murder of some kind, whenever there's any kind of tragedy, people always try and find ways to, like, oh, I need something to blame, I need, what was the cause of this, yeah. and they'll, they'll blame Marley Manson music, they'll blame video games, they'll blame, you know, they'll, they'll look for something to blame, mm -hmm. because the true scary thing is that there's nothing to blame, and that oh, doubt, some yeah. people are just going to do this, and some people are just mm -hmm. this evil, and maybe that's, you know, not entirely true obviously like th things like you mm -hmm. know better mental health <laughs> care and sure. yeah. uh, there's, there's mm -hmm. ways to tackle it absolutely but just the idea that there's nothing we could have done to stop this is really what's scary about mm -hmm. it uh we need something to blame uh mm -hmm. also gun control may help with some of these issues 
uh, just <laughs> putting that out the there. You say? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I, I know. I know what we're blaming. Crazy the, thought. <laughs> we're blaming too many doors right now, but I'm just saying, like, Jesus. <laughs> you know, doors and backpacks might be an issue, but they're not that as much of an issue as the guns. Just for the record, uh, so. Yeah. You know, it's just that kind of idea, like, there's there's no real reason for it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Liv Tyler's character wanting to understand why and just getting... Beca mm -hmm. Because you were here to do it, too. Like, we, we just had victims to pick, that was all. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know, I like that. Yeah. I, I feel like if they tried to go into it too much and explain why they're doing it, I think I would become less interested in them as characters. <laughs> you know what would have been better is if she said, like, why are you doing this? And then they were like... Wait a minute, are you not the Thompsons? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh boy. <laughs> we oh, messed <dude>. up. <laughs> I also like that when they take their masks off at the end, and that's mm -hmm. kind of when Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman know they're about to die because like they mm -hmm. wouldn't be showing their faces if they were going to let them go. Um no, we don't we, get to see their faces, and I like that. I like that the camera doesn't let us see who they are. Now, is it they is it true that um I think uh, my uh fiance actually told me this that um they use like the director purposely used like supermodels or something as the three people uh that would be news to me but was it was there a reason for that and, and i think it was just something like just the fact that like you know oh we're gonna take these like incredibly good looking people but then like kind of just put them in masks and make them do like hideous things like i, I think i guess was yeah. the point i i, I uh, guess i kind of like the idea that when they take off the mask at the end like Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman are expecting to see these hideous, mm. like crazed, deranged Redneck, people. Yeah. Billy, yeah, but in, but instead they just see like really attractive people they, they would see in a sofa commercial, and like <laughs> you know like because like, even hell I uh I had an idea for a horror movie uh, when I was younger that I wanted to write and mm -hmm. uh, not to get into it too much but the the big sort you don't of want to the, give that gold away yeah I know. But the big thing at the end was going to be that, no, this was a normal person with a family who went home to his mm -hmm. wife and kids, and oh, okay. yeah. he was otherwise normal, but mm -hmm. he just, he had to do this as well. Yeah. Like, that was the whole thing. Which, um, um, unfortunately, it happens, like, a lot. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of true crime podcasts at work, and it's like, mm -hmm. every serial killer, I feel like, has, like, a family and a wife and kids. And Which is funny, because I, I think, I feel like the classic trope that everyone always goes to, it's always a loner, and they're yeah. always, like, depressed and deranged, mm -hmm. and it's like, no, 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 it's someone who's in a family who's got, like, a sick desire he wants to fulfill, like, outside mm -hmm. of his family. Uh, mm -hmm. And I say his, because, like, 99% of serial killers are all men for some reason, because, I True. don't know, we're more, <laughs> more, more messed up in the head or, or something. I... It's almost like there's a weird... Uh masculinity problem <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> oh damn we're, we're getting slightly political here or there uh at the strangers <laughs> for some reason i don't know how that happened uh but look forward to the comments <laughs> here we are uh so no, no, I, I i i like the the not knowing why they're doing it to me that adds to the creepiness like, of them do you like the ending 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 uh where we get a little scare with uh Liv tyler uh, the, the, the cheap scare at the end, because obviously yeah. at the start of the movie we get this scene of these two kids on bikes, kind of like mm -hmm. seeing some of the aftermath of the carnage in the morning. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the movie, they actually run into the killers as they're driving away. And they come out and take one of their little Christianity leaflets mm -hmm. uh, from them. Um, I mean, if, if I'm going to like sort of like agree with your criticism that they, they kind of go maybe one step too far into or try to make this creepy, I would maybe mm -hmm. agree that that scene with the kids was a bit like... You know, it's like, yeah. oh, can I have one of those leaflets? And mm -hmm. he's like, are you a sinner? It's like, sometimes. Like, yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. But that one was a bit on the nose. See, like, see, like, the thing is, it just feels like, I, I don't, since this is, like, trying to be more realistic, I don't want, um, you know, I don't want these characters to know that they're in a horror movie. And, like, with, like, a line like that, it makes it feel like they know they're in a horror movie. Like, they're like, sometimes like you know they might as well turn to the camera and be like get it because <laughs> we just sinned <laughs> like you know like like stuff like that like uh, uh i don't know it's again just you know, it didn't really work for me no yeah, that's fair that's fair <laughs> I, so so the, the kids you actually see them get into the house and Liv tyler who almost got to call someone because uh the friend you know uh dennis reynolds we'll talk about him in a minute uh but <laughs> She she hears here's a phone go off and she goes to try to call for help, but the killer's still there and he takes the phone and he just leaves her there to die because she's already been stabbed at this point. 
and the kids come in and she wakes up and screams at you know the, <laughs> for the final little scare um i mean i would rather not have it but at the same time i'll take this like a million times over the uh the pop you know the, you know from the from the uh the, Sinister. I was trying to think of the name there. Uh, you know, where the head just pops in. To, you know, it's just a <laughs> cheap... flies to the screen. Yeah, like. <laughs> because, I mean, the, those final scenes in the Sinister movies and other, like, supernatural horror movies like it, it's basically mm-hmm. the equivalent of a... You know, a, what are those things on the internet called? Where you watch a video and there's, like, a, a screamer. It's, just, it's, just, it's the uh-huh. movie equivalent of that, of just loud noise, something in your face. At least this is more in context. Like, she's... Mm-hmm there and we know she was kind of alive earlier and she might still be alive i forgot there's like that one commercial everyone was passing around for a minute that was like that serene car commercial that goes around like a, a bend and then a thing just like jumps out at you mm. forgot about those <laughs> yeah so like turn that into a movie <laughs> <laughs> so no i mean it's a little bit cheap but it's not as cheap as it mm. could be I, i've definitely sure. seen cheaper examples of the final <laughs> scare before the before yeah. the credit roll mm-hmm. uh my, my my biggest complaint would be the 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 whole this is a true story thing. I, I don't think you needed that narration sure. and that like opening text crawl. I think just going immediately to the here's like the kid scene, some of the aftermath. Okay, jump mm-hmm. back. Uh, yeah. I also don't think we needed the the flashback to explain why they're in a oh. really awkward place. Because it's at the start of the movie, the, the, <sighs> the two of them are kind of like they're not talking to each other. Things are very awkward. And you kind of mm-hmm. get it from context, and then as soon as like the the, the ring box came out later on, you'd have got mm-hmm. that this was okay. He proposed, and she turned him down. Yeah. But the movie insists on giving us a flashback of him at, the, they're at this other wedding, and he takes mm-hmm. her outside to propose. I don't. I don't think we needed that scene. I don't think we needed it. No. I think it worked without it. Like it, it's already a pretty short movie, mm-hmm. and it, it was already feeling like it was going long. <laughs> like at that point, to me, I was like, all right, let let's get past it, past this. We know what we're getting into. Like the characters are so like maudlin and stuff and it's like we don't I, I i don't need this i don't need this backstory if anything i don't want to feel more for the characters considering what's going to happen to them oh see that's why it's effective though because i want to feel more for them because then the movie will be gut-wrenching uh because mm. I, I disagree that it felt long before that i actually liked all the outside of the flashback i didn't like the flashback because i feel like it was on mm-hmm. the but all the stuff that was sort of teasing like I like that we jumped out of the movie and they were already kind of pissed at each other, or it was kind of awkward mm-hmm. and you didn't know why. Like, to me, that mm-hmm. made them feel more like real people, uh, which yeah. meant that the movie worked just better, because I was a bit more invested in what was going on with them. Because um, I, I think, too, it's often too easy to try and just make them super likable and like, oh, hey, you like these characters, they're fun and joking mm-hmm. and they do these things, whereas this was like, no, 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 let's go a different tactic, let's make them kind of real, let's make them be in this kind of awkward place already. Uh, it, it just kind of felt like there were people who existed to an extent because of that. And I don't know. I, I kind of don't like that because I mean, kind of if bad things are gonna happen to these people, I kind of want there to be a reason for it. Like everything about this is kind of like, oh, these horrible things are gonna happen to these people who don't deserve it. They didn't do anything wrong, and it, it's kind of a very like mean, cynical movie. <laughs> that, that, that is the horrific part of it. Tim. That's that's horror. <laughs> No, like well, horror is, uh, you know, you, you run over uh, some old lady, so you know that her husband curses you, or you read from a book that you shouldn't have, or you're having unprotected sex—the worst sin of all. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> uh, to, I don't think every horror victim has to be getting comeuppance for something. I, I feel like part <laughs> of what makes some horror really effective is that they are innocent and that they don't deserve <laughs> what's happening. True. To them. That's what makes it scary. That's what makes it, you know, have it give you that feeling in your gut, like, oh no, I don't want this to happen to them. Uh, that's what you want. But I'm a nice boy. I don't want, I don't want bad things to happen. To <laughs> You're not a nice boy. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> in terms of bad boy. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> makes it sound cool. Oh, I got cats fighting <laughs> behind me. All, all chaos is happening. Uh, so yeah, he, he, because of this awkwardness, they were going to go on a road trip, but he calls his best friend mm-hmm. to come and pick him up in the morning, and he ends up showing up early at like 5 in the morning, and that's Dennis Reynolds. And now at this point, <laughs> they've already had the, the moments of like seeing the characters outside, uh, mm-hmm. having like the, the car smashed up so they can't leave, mm-hmm. and he finds his dad's shotgun in the house, and he's like, well, I've never really used it before, and you know, 
Uh, I thought that was an excellent moment as well, where he kind of admitted that he'd lied about going hunting with his dad. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's something I just said. I thought, okay, that, that, again, it feels like a little bit real. Like, that, he was trying to impress her. Yeah, I've went hunting, I've shot fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're hiding in the back room, and we, we cut to like, the friend Mike arriving, and mm-hmm. he's on the phone, he's like, oh, where are you, douchebag? I came here early because I'm always running <laughs> after your ass. And it's kind of a friendly kind of, like, you know, jesting. Yeah. And he, and we get a slow sequence of him like coming inside. He starts to notice that there's something wrong, and he's creeping around the house. And at this point, the 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 villains are, are kind of playing with their heroes because they've been putting they've put on a record to to like sort of creep them out. It's this country music, and we get this sequence. Which of, uh, again, it's like it's a record that they already owned, but it just so happened to be like this super creepy sounding like record. I don't know. I thought this song was creepy itself. Me. The, creep, the song wasn't creepy itself. I, I think it was. I think you just listening to that song on its own is weird. <laughs> it, no, it was creepy in context because someone else who shouldn't be in the house is playing music. That's the creepy part of it. And I think the song itself was pretty creepy. It just, I don't know, the way it sounds like, I don't know, so slow and, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, like the voice it sounded very, I don't know, creepy to me. The, the... <laughs> But this is such a sorry weird, whoever is, sung it, but this is such a weird complaint. <laughs> this country <laughs> song was creepy, damn it! It's too forced. But no, um, and you get this sequence of like the the, the male killer, uh, kind of walking behind him with an axe and just kind of mm-hmm. very slowly just walking, and it goes on for a while, and it's just really suspenseful, and then eventually, mate gets to the door where they're hiding, and Scott Speedsman just reacts immediately and shoots him in the face. And it's like, he shoots his own best friend. And it's like, and for me, I really like that because it was kind of like, okay, now this has turned into like, not only are they terrified, not only are they worried about these intruders, not only are they worried about all this stuff, even if they survive this night, they're never going to recover from the fact that they just shot his best friend in the face. For sure. Right? Well, we've yeah. crossed this line where this is, this is decades of therapy if they somehow survive. <laughs> uh, so, no, I, I dug that. I dug that because it went over this, this even more horrific line. Uh, in mm-hmm. terms of their their emotions and their mm-hmm. psychology, so and they, I mean, it's good for the movie, but it it definitely frustrates me because I'm like, oh, like you could have waited a second till you see who it was, or like I, I mean, I know you're jumpy and everything, but uh, it, it's just like also I I want these people to yeah you know, I'm I'm rooting for the good guys, I want them to escape, and then just to have your best chance like gunned down this is what's so weird to me about like, your complaints ah, Tim, is that you're saying that you care about the characters so you, you don't like the movie because something bad like that's kind of the point like you're really rooting for them and you don't want them to die that was that's what gets you invested that's what makes you care about the fact that they're being hunted down it's this is why it's good <laughs> oh my god this is this is <laughs> this is starting to sound like matt i don't want movies to make me feel things <laughs> i mean i want to feel like you know <laughs> joy and happiness when the killer gets what's coming to them. I don't, I don't want to ah, just nah. feel like hopelessness and despair. No, nah, no, nah, hopelessness and despair are great, and sometimes you need <laughs> the movies to have the bad guys win. Uh, just so that it's possible sometimes. Because otherwise the good guys would always win, and movies would be boring. Is that why you... <laughs> is, that, is that why you're rooting for Steppenwolf? <laughs> <laughs> Why, why do you, why you got to bring Justice League up? I, you think I really like that movie or something, and I don't. You know what depresses me as a DC fan to talk about those movies, Tim? Oh, well. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, actually not even me, because it, it was what I look like. I'm going to hire someone to come to Tim's door mm-hmm. and ask if, if someone's there. I know. They'll knock on the door and they'll just say, "Is the boy here?" <laughs> I mean, uh, I'd probably invite him in and be like, "Yeah, like, well, come sit down and watch it." Yeah, I've got it on Blu-ray. I got it on Blu-ray. I got it in 4K. I got it on DVD. I got it in VOD. <laughs> got the uh, unofficial comic book adaptation that I I, I even recorded myself. it onto old, an old VHS tape, so I've got a VHS copy just in case. Mm. You know, just in case. Uh, that's true yeah if a nuclear war happens and you know uh, an emp takes out all of our dvd players we're gonna need those old vhs tapes but, but, but not the vhs players not the vcrs no not them no those are analog 
<laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not going to sit here and explain science to you, Pete. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They don't use electricity to function. No, not at all. <laughs> Tim will have a wind up VHS. Yeah, yeah. You will like a VCR mm. with a handle on it, and you just wind it yourself so it will play the movie. Oh, not a bad idea. And you, you'll 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 <laughs> you'll have like a little a little helper, a little, little assistant who'll turn it for you. He's like, yeah. right mm. tonight, Frederick. <laughs> The boy, <laughs> spin the tape. <laughs> oh, oh, I like that. That sounds like a much more hopeful outlook for the future than and the post apocalypse right now. Yes, after the apocalypse. <laughs> yes, you, you... <laughs> hopeful indeed, Timmy. Hopeful indeed. Mm. So yeah, I mean, obviously, a lot of the movie is characters standing creepily, like outside in the background, messing with them, writing things on the windows, and then sort of amping up to where they're in the house and. You know, Liv, Ty ends up on her own at one point and has to run around a little bit. Uh, typical horror <laughs> I movie I never stuff. realized her name was Liv. <laughs> well, Liv Tyler? Yeah, like, well, I mean, I know that's her name, but I never realized, like, oh, like, Liv, like, Liv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a person lives? I don't know. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's short for, uh, like, uh, maybe Olivia or something like that. Alive. Uh, short for Alive. <laughs> yeah. Her real name is Alive Tyler, but... <laughs> People call her Liv. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Steve Tyler and his wife went, mm. you know what? I want to call her alive. <laughs> that was his thought process. I want to call her alive. Oh, dear. But yeah, it's a pretty straightforward movie. Like I say, it's quite short, and you know, it, it sort of builds up these beats quite simply, but I think it's effectively done. I think it's shot really well. Um, I did care about the characters enough to, to be invested in what was happening to them. And mm. I, I like the shooting style, I like the creepy mass, I like the creepy moments. Uh, I think Tim is being kind of kind of weird here, but that's okay. He's always weird. Mm. Mm. So what do you think they... Uh, <laughs> like, how often do you think they do this? Like, is this like a you know, once a year thing? Or... Um, well, I mean, at the end of the movie, they, they did say next time it'll be easier. They said that to each other. So I wonder... Do you think that means this was the first time they did this? It may be, yeah. Interesting, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that, does, that does make it sound like it's the first time they've done this. And how do you think they know each other? Do they meet online, or is this more of a... Father-daughter. Uh, they family... Kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, family bonding thing. <laughs> hey, hey, Christy, what do you do with your dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we go to Stranger's house season. We we, we sit through it. It's, it's fun. It's good fun. <laughs> but you know, that's another thing too. Like, if this you you know, like stuff like this isn't a true story because if this was a true story, like It'd we would not stop talking about it. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd also be extremely uncomfortable to watch a movie about it because these real people oh, yeah. actually really got <laughs> slaughtered like this. A thousand percent. Yeah. So you know, the, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, but. It, it's also funny to be like, this is a true story. Nothing is known about what happened next. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the strangest. I mean, I don't know there's much more to add. It's, it's a pretty straightforward home invasion movie, but it's really effective <laughs> in what it does. And for me, mm -hmm. the, the real money is in the, the, the silent uh, villain in the background scenes <laughs> and the Batman in of scenes. That's the stuff that yes. really gets me going they are silent but deadly yes yes you just compared the villains and the strangers to a <laughs> fart very good <laughs> let's rate the movie Tim what would you rate the strangers okay. uh well even though I'm not hot on it like I, I can't go too low because again there's nothing like offensively bad about it like a, a, again like you know on technical levels that you know everything is you know absolutely fine uh but Again, I can't go too high either because, you know, my personal enjoyment of, of it is just not that great. So um, I'm going to give it a 5.5, .5, which I think is like, you know, anything below a 5, I think is like, well, this is just not well made. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to, again, like I can't go like too high because I feel like, you know, like, you know, if I start getting into like sevens or something, then it's like, oh, well, like I enjoyed this. And I don't know, I just... Unfortunately, I just don't really enjoy it. Well, I'm going to hit you with an 8, Tim. 
air time for me. <laughs> As a solid movie, I think mm. this was a, a nice surprise when I first saw it, and mm. definitely, um, if we ever do like, because we done our top one hundred horror movies uh, last mm-hmm. year, if we ever do like a like top fifties for decades, say if we do like a top fifty horror movies of the two thousands, this would mm. definitely be uh, a reasonable number on that. I think. I mean, I. I wouldn't argue with that, but to be fair, I think like oh, that wasn't the best decade. <laughs> like the it 2000s. was better than the nineties, Tim. You look through yeah, horror movies in the nineties, right? and yeah. I think you'll be surprised how how desolate that decade was. That's true. So you know, I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, they all can't be the eighties and seventies, Tim. We, we know they're the best decades for horror. We know that, but yeah, and uh, I mean. We're not done yet, but I would actually say this de- decade has actually been pretty great. Like, I don't know, like, I mean, maybe, like, starting, like, the last couple of years, but I feel like we've been getting really solid stuff, like, you well, know, Yeah, but we also got the boys, now. so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Some but people like it. <laughs> the, the boys out this decade, so, you know, Gryffindor just lost two points for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, I try to be happy with the kids and make a Harry Potter <laughs> reference, even though I don't even like Harry Potter that much. Yeah, yeah, it's all about uh, kids like, I don't know, divergence now, I guess. No, they don't. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> no one gives a shit about divergence. A, there was a very specific window of high school girls, right, and maybe junior high mm-hmm. school girls, for about mm-hmm. three or four years who were at divergence, and that was it. Mm-hmm. No one before, no one after. Just those that group, that one specific group. Mm-hmm. And you include you you include yourself in that group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it on the shelf behind you. Actually, <laughs> you <know? laughs> if, if I was included in that group, I'd be devastated that the last movie never actually got me. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah, you know, this is funny, Tim. They split the last book into two, like, you know, like Hunger Games oh, and Harry Potter. No. And, it, and then the, 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 the first part did so so poorly that the second <laughs> one never got made. Oh, man. That, that, that really is. Uh, <laughs> that, that's funny. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if you're a big fan of that series, that does suck. Yeah, yeah, that would suck a lot. There's no Kickstarter for it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they'll try much. to do, like, a TV show or a TV movie to wrap up, but they don't know if they can get the cast mm-hmm. back because, you know, it's like, Shailene yeah. Woodley and like Kate Winslet and stuff like oh jeez <laughs> like how did you get them and for, and for your little TV movie to wrap up the story well I feel bad maybe we should just make it for him I'm good <laughs> I'm good I was a good mood Timmy my, my Expanse which was looking cancelled got saved by Amazon this week so I'm uh, I mean I, I haven't watched the Expanse uh, I've heard it's good so good for it but I, I just feel like if something cancelled, just let it go. I mean, no, Tim, this was far too good for the best shows on TV. No. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Tim, I refuse to accept <laughs> that just because a network made some poor choices and then made the ultimate poor choice in ending a show, that we should accept that that should be the end of it. Mm. Firefly should have had at least five seasons. I'm saying it now. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's better if it's like immediately cancelled and picked up so there's no like you know time lost or, or anything but i feel like the stuff that's like you know i, I guess this is maybe less stuff that's cancelled and more stuff that like you know five years later let's have a reboot oh yeah you're talking about something some, like yeah you're talking about something different you're talking about like roseanne yeah. and uh will and grace that have yeah. came back after like 10 years Ooh. of being away yeah just let it go like but I mean, saw like something on Facebook the other day. People were talking about like a Parks and Rec reboot. Where I'm like, I love Parks and Rec, but do we? It, oh like... yeah, no, I, I agree with that. You're talking about something. You're talking about revivals. Uh, yeah, this is different. Expansive story isn't finished. <laughs> There's more books mm-hmm. to do. It was finished for me, but <sighs> Tim, you're the worst. I'm glad. I'm glad you're not the one making these calls because I'd probably be home invading you before long. I... <laughs> I, I guarantee if someone would just get it through their head to let me run a network, I guarantee it would be number one. <laughs> On that delusion, <laughs> final point, 
we shall wrap up this episode of Screams mm. After Midnight. So we are going to do Strangers Pray at Night, uh, but that will not be, that'll be like next week's regular episode, but you will be getting a bonus before that to make up for the week lost because mm. we're nice and we're, we're nice like that. And I'll just tell you right nice now, place. the movie is straight up garbage, so you can expect a nice ranting and raving uh, angry review. From one of us, at least. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Tim did like the boy, so who knows where he's going to fall down on it. But, uh, so, yeah, so that's The Strangers. Uh, let us know what you thought of this movie in the comments below. It is worth mentioning to check out patreon.com slash TV if you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here. We, of course, have a monthly vote of four movies. The four mm. movies up for vote right now are for Dario Argento films. So if you're a Patreon or you're thinking <laughs> of signing up to Patreon, you've got a couple of days left to get the vote in before the end of the month. And... Actually, will you? This will go up on Wednesday. <laughs> um, it'll still be me. It'll still be me. Okay, you'll have a little bit of time. You'll have, you'll have a small amount of time to get the vote mm. in. Uh, and then there'll be a new vote for next month up sometime in about a week into the month, usually, is yeah. when, it, when it goes up. Uh, next month will be June, so... Y yes, Tim. <laughs> in case they don't know, just putting it out there. Next month will, will be June. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let that awkward moment sit there for a minute. I, 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 I don't know what to follow that up with. Anyway, so uh, that's, that's this group's after. But like and subscribe, all the usual stuff, all of it helps out. Um, and that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching the scary movies, guys. And I really need a catchphrase for this show. But it, since I don't, I'll just say, we'll see you next time.